So today we are taking a look at the CLVX1 Gesture Keyboard by Cleve Tora. It features adaptive intelligence. What that means is that your keyboard is actively learning how you're using this keyboard to give you the best experience possible. Now, this keyboard is available for Windows and Mac. Uh, this is the Windows version, but I will show you that you still can use this on your Mac. But what makes the difference is that for Windows, there's a software for it that opens up the functionality and the customability of this keyboard. It's not available for Mac yet, but when it does come out, you're going to get the same full features as Windows but I'll show you what all that looks like so you can check it out because it's really cool. All right, so what is the CLVX1 gesture keyboard? Well, if you look right here, we have like a square box right here. Basically what it does, it takes a trackpad that you would find on your laptop and it just puts it, embeds it right into a keyboard. Check this out. As you can see, I'm just moving my trackpad on my screen as if or a trackpad on my laptop or my mouse, but all from the keys of this keyboard, which is really cool. Now you can do some basic things like opening a map. So I can do is double tap right there, double tapping the, tees, the keys lightly. I can close that. I can bring up the right click by double tapping two buttons at the same time, very slightly with my two fingers. I can get out of that. Uh, I can move apps by tap, tap and hold. So tap, tap and hold, and I can move this around. I can highlight and move items. So tap, tap, hold, highlight, and of course do the same to move it just like that. It really works super simple. It's, oh, and if I wanted to, since it is a trackpad, uh, you can speed up the control of the tracking of the mouse. It really is up to you, but you're just gonna have to figure out which speed works for you. I can also do things like this. It does feature pinch and zoom. So if I wanted to, I can zoom in and also I can pinch and close it just like that. Now you probably noticed how I closed the window before. It does feature three finger gestures. So I'll just take three fingers and I'll swipe down, I'll close it, I'll swipe up, I'll bring up an app, or I'll swipe up again, and I'll bring the other apps that are currently available. I can go left or right, switching between the available apps that are there for me. And of course, if I want to scroll, let's go ahead, uh, I'll show you. That scrolling just works just fine. Let's go to the about, and I can just go two finger, I can just slide up. I can scroll up and down. Of course, we can zoom in on a web page at the same time. Now, you may be wondering, okay, will this get in the way if I have, you know, I get that it does gesture, but will I get some undesired uh, movements that I didn't intend? So what helps with that is has a left and right zone. So this is what I mean. This helps lessen unintended uh, maybe keystrokes or swipes of the keyboard. So right now I have it set on, uh, let's go hold it in the right, there we go, hold it for a second. The right side is now activated. What this means is that I can gesture on the right side of the keyboard and if for some reason this side comes in, it's not going to mess what's happening here, you see? Everything's going to default to the right to my right hand as far as gestures go, and it's not gonna be interfered with with, with my left hand. If I was left-handed, I could switch to the other side, left-handed, and now it's doing the same thing, and if for some reason my right hand were to come in, it would not interfere with that. So me, since I'm right-handed, I'll leave it on the right hand for me. Now, I did mention you can use this on your Mac. Let me show you brief briefly what that looks like. So let's take this here. Um, just real quick, this does have, this does feature three pre Bluetooth presets for different devices. So right now my laptop is preset number three. I'm gonna switch this to preset number one because I have that set for my Mac. So let's go over here. All right, so when you're connected to your Mac, you're gonna have basic controls as if you were using a traditional trackpad with your Mac. Of course, you can just move it around just like that. Um, you can also click on, sorry, you can also click on icons or, or programs. You can drag programs around things like that uh, you can even whoops let's go ahead and go back to that uh, you can even right click as well to show things that go there uh, we can close this out we can use uh, bigger gestures if we wanted to uh, to bring things up so we can swipe up we can see the things that are available to me we can swipe down uh, we can go left and right to see the apps that I have going on and we can go right back and if i wanted to 
I can access my trackpad options since it is seen as a trackpad. And for me, I found out when I connected this to my Mac, I had to bring up the speed of trackpads. So but for me, it felt a little more uh, intuitive, more like a, I guess, a mouse speed. So yeah, so go ahead and we can bring right there just so we're covering more distance with a shorter display. And of course, at the same time, if we wanted to, we can also do zoom as well. And again, we have basic access using the CLVX one on our Mac, just like we did on our laptop or on our Windows. Uh, let's go back to our Windows laptop so I can show you what other cool things this keyboard can do. Now, I wanna be open with you. I've been using this for about two weeks and I'm very much a mouse guy. I, I don't, when I have to edit videos, I like editing it with a keyboard and mouse. I'm not a big fan when it comes to a laptop uh, trackpad, but for the sake of this keyboard, I gave it about two weeks to really see what can I do with it. And you know, after two weeks, like, oh, I get it. I mean, granted that my brain is already tuned with shortcuts and you know, with mouse clicks and all that stuff, I find myself more efficient so far, but when I really started getting used to it, I was actually fine. My, I was actually be able to see like, oh, I, I get it now. I see how they can make something happen, but now they're in, in putting that all into one piece. Uh, let me give you a quick example as far as using this in Premiere Pro. Okay, so if I want to, I can, of course, I can click around all over my timeline if I wanted to. Basic things like that. If I want to cut up um, video, same thing. Let's see, find a spot that I want and then go ahead and tap, make cuts right there if I want to stop the timeline if I want to drag um, video files double tap highlight and of course double tap again and move it around so I definitely can do some basic things of course if you're already used to using a trackpad on your Mac or your laptop this is going to be second nature to you especially with the custom customization you can add additional things to make it even easier for you at the same time time now speaking about customization let me show you the app the touch on keys app now when you're using this app you're gonna have to connect it through usb so it can interface with the app i'll connect it there i'll hold the usb key right there and we're now connected to the app let's go ahead and open it up and you'll see our home page right here and we'll start going around let me show you the the settings and here you, here you can see you can actually set your default for a left hand, uh, right hand. And at the same time, you have your adaptive intelligence that we spoke about earlier. What this does, it helps learn the keystrokes of how you're using it. So if I want to, uh, right now it's on pause, but I can press continue learning. And if you see here where it says six out of 10 bars, basically every single time that I tap on this, it's picking up the keystrokes that you can see by the number on the side all the way to a thousand. It's gonna keep, it's gonna, it's gonna sense how hard do I press the keys? How fast do I press the keys? All with the goal that it makes, it, if it knows the difference between a key press and a gesture control for using it as a trackpad. That's the goal of that. And when I wanna take a break from it learning, I can go ahead and stop. And you can see right now that my sensitivity level is at six, which means lower sensitivity and there's a lower chance for false uh, gestures. And if I want at the same time, since I see that right now my level from about six out of 10 bars is a level six, uh, if, I'm an, if I'm at any other preset, I can just hold the AI button and press the number and I can press six and it'll default back to that number. So I'm at the correct sensitivity for the way I like to use it. Uh, with that being said, let's talk about the feel of the keys. And after using this for about six weeks, I like the way it feels. It feels light, very soft. Um, I mean, you've heard before the, the kind of sounds it makes, you know, it's really up to you if, if this is quiet enough or loud enough for you. But as a keyboard itself, it does feel very comfortable. And well, I didn't mention this before, but you actually do have some mouse clickers right here at the bottom if you wanted to use it in tandem uh, at this at the same time. So if you want to, you can you can uh, you can do that. If you, for some reason you want to get rid of the gesture control, well then you can just go ahead and press type only, and all gesture control is taken taken off. Now, one thing that I really like about this keyboard is its shortcuts, and you'll see on the top. We've got emojis going on here. We have folders that we can bring up. 
Uh, we can bring up voice to type, all set. And of course, we can customize and make these other things as well. Now, if we look right here, let's talk about the RGB side of this keyboard. If we look at the top right here, you'll see how it's yellow and purple. The yellow is for our is the dimmable lights on our keyboard and the purple is for the sound control to our laptop. So watch here, if I slide it right here, you can see how I can bring up the lights of the keyboard or I can bring the lights down of the keyboard. Let's bring it right back up. Then if I wanna play with the volume, I can just go ahead and slide it down here. You'll see the volume go down. I can bring it all the way back here and bring the volume up. There you go. Let's play with the customization of this as far as the lights. So let's go back to our touch on keys app Okay, we'll go back to, here we go. Go back to our light. And here we can play with the colors of our keyboard. So right here, let me go back up once. Okay, so here we go. We can adjust the sensitivity of our two things here. We can change the assignment, change the light if we want to. Uh, going back to the backlight here, if I want to, I can change the background of our, all our lights. So right now the default is blue, but if I want, I can change the color, maybe green. You see how our backlight is not green. We can go right back to our reset color. If I want to type, if you notice how we press the button, it surrounds in a color. Maybe I want to do like a little orange and teal. So I'll do that. I'll switch it to orange. Okay, and watch when I press it, orange now surrounds it when I press when I press that. Of course, we can go back to default. Uh, we can play with the trackpad area. And so right now, when we go move our gesture, we see how it gestures with an orange, but I can play with that. And the gesture can be green as I move it around. And the same thing with the touch area. Right now, it's kind of like a bit of a, a light purple. We can switch that to all orange if we want or some other color at the same time. Let's go back to default. Okay, so let me give you my final thoughts on the CVLX1. As a trackpad keyboard, this is really innovative. Uh, again, I told you earlier, I'm not a big trackpad guy. I don't like using this a lot on a, on a keyboard, but for the sake of this keyboard, I gave it a shot. I'm like, oh, I get it. Very intuitive, easy to use. Um, I do want to say this uh, though. This is my main keyboard. I've been using this keyboard for years. I'm just used to it. Okay, I like to have my keyboard raised at a little angle here. This goes lower than my regular keyboard. And then when I bring up the, the sticks here, it raises a little higher. I noticed that during these two weeks of use, my wrist had to get used to that new angle. So just keep that in mind. There may be a little period when you have to have to break that in if, if you like it a little raised up. If you like it flat, well then, I, I think you're good to go. But for me, there was a bit of a, a part here. I love the customization of the RGB colors. And of course, with a touch on keys app, you have more customization on the windows. Of course, we just have to wait a little bit longer for the Mac version, but that's okay because even on Mac, you have the driver's availability to use it exactly like a trackpad. And, and on top of that, it's just a really good looking keyboard. It's a very attractive keyboard that really, it's gonna pop. And I love how it just gives you all sorts of different colors and customizations and a whole bunch of shortcuts at the same time. All right, that is the CLVX1. Really hope this video helped you out. Take care, bye. As always, I'll leave links in the description down below so you can pick up your own. Hey guys, do me a favor, hit that like button if you like what's going on here, hit that subscribe button if you love what's going on, on here, and ding that notification so you can be notified for future videos as well. All right, I will see you next one, take care.